Well, so you want to do something for uh, your CBS uh, blog or your website, or what do you want to do? Yeah, so are we like doubling? Yeah, I just wanted to talk to you because obviously you were there where all the action was. Um, I'm actually recording right now. This is you're going live and I'm recording. Is that right? Wow. Yes. Like and, and I saw, I was watching earlier and you were doing that with everyone. It was kind of a weird experience. It was. You know, it was really weird. We had the Fox 11 uh, newswoman uh, Gigi came down and to interview me, and it was like crossing swords. It was like my mic went to her mouth, when she, and then it was it. I can't imagine they're going to use that video. Let's just put it that way. It's, it, she, it's an interesting <laughs> visual there. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, I, I'll introduce you here to my CBS News viewers. I'm talking to the tech personality extraordinaire and guru, Leo Laporte, and he's live streaming as I'm talking. And he was there where all the action was during the iPad announcement um, that everyone was waiting for basically today. Leo, give me a sense of the energy there. Well, first of all, you know, we walked up and there's satellite trucks. Every network's there, every local television station. Uh, press that you would never see at an Apple event is there. It, it Clearly, there was a lot more interest in this than uh, the last uh, iPod Nano release. This, is a, this was a big story for mainstream media. In fact, I even remember watching uh, this morning, watching uh, CBS, uh, the early show, and... Uh, and, of course, they're covering the State of the Union address, which is the big story of the day for normal people. But the tease, the thing they kept people watching through the commercials three or four times was, Apple's got a big announcement. What could it be? Apple's got a big announcement. What could it be? Yeah. That's, that's what people were really interested in. So what exactly are we talking about? What is the iPad for the regular person out there, not maybe the tech person? You know, Apple's really good at creating uh, new products categories or maybe taking product categories that haven't really taken off yet and, and, and making them succeed. It starts with the Apple II. The personal computer wasn't new, but... The Apple II really made the personal computer, put it on the map. Same thing with graphic user interfaces. The Macintosh put graphic user interfaces on the map. The iPod, uh, the iPhone. And I think Apple's goal here is to create virtually a new category. It's not a laptop. It's not an iPhone. It, it, if, you know, for shorthand, you could say it's an iPod Touch, you know, one of these little iPods blown up to about 10 yeah. inches. Um, and, and actually, that's almost exactly what it is. It still has the same iPod button at the bottom. It has the same user interface. In fact, it's exactly the same operating system. It's just a bigger screen. It's twice as wide and twice as tall. Uh, it's a beautiful screen. And some things happen when you get that big with the iPod touch interface. The, the multi-touch, you know, the pinch and zoom features really make a lot of sense even more so on a bigger screen. Uh, the touch interface kind of is very usable. Same, mm -hmm. same problem, of course. There's no f physical keyboard, so you have to type on the screen. But those keys are bigger. They're actually almost as big as a normal keyboard would be. I found it very usable. It's a very elegant feeling device. You know, it's got that uh, heavy gauge aluminum unibody construction that Apple does for its MacBooks and MacBook Pros. Um, and, and it feels very solid and, and, and good in the hand. Great industrial design. I think it's a beautiful product. We just don't know if there's a market. Yeah, is there for it. use for it? Yeah, is there use for it? Like you have the Kindle right now, you have your laptops. And then I guess the iPad's like right in the middle of both of those things. Yeah, I mean, in my in my opinion, um, it's going to replace my Kindle. Uh, I can't wait to replace the Kindle with it because it's it's a white screen with black text. The Kindle's kind of a blue gray screen with black text. It, it has. Uh, you know, the ability to show color. It has the ability to show video and, and audio within a book. Um, the book itself is bigger, nicer looking. Um, it, it, the page turns are beautiful. Uh, it's really just an elegant user interface. I can't wait to read books on it. So it's, you know, it's 150 bucks more than a Kindle, but of course it does a lot more than a Kindle. So it, it's a book reader for me. You know, it's funny. I mean, one of the things Steve showed, it has a little dock. You could put it on and then it goes into photo mode and it's, it, it's one of those photo frames. Uh, a very high quality photo frame that you can upload new pictures to. That's pretty cool. It shows movies. It shows television shows. It has every app, all 120,000 apps that are available in the Apple uh, application store now yeah. and more to come. 100,000 actually, yeah. Yeah. Over 100,000. Yeah. So, uh, you know, in a way, it's like a this lifestyle is... lifestyle accessory, it seems. Well, it might be. And certainly for women, it makes more sense because you've got purses. I don't know where a guy's going to stick this thing. It's way too big to put in a pocket. Instead of you holding our lip glosses, we'll hold the <laughs> will iPad. You, will you? Will you do? Let's make a deal. I'll hold your wallet and your lip gloss, and you'll hold my iPad. That's a good idea. That's a fair trade. Finally, something we could give you to hold. <laughs> yeah, 
Exactly. There you go. Well, were people disappointed though? Because I'm hearing there's some sort, there's a bit of disappointment. I think there's a lot of disappointment um, from people who were listening to the hype. Remember, we all that talking that we did about all the things that it was going to have, and nobody really knew. So if you expected it to have a camera in it, for instance, you were disappointed. If you expected it to have multi-touch that you could, you know, gestures like Minority Report, you were disappointed. If you thought it was going to have an FM radio, you'd be disappointed. Uh, I wasn't disappointed. I thought, in fact, that it hit the nail on the head. It is exactly what Apple needed to do, which is not a computer, not a phone, but an appliance, a device that the the technology gets out of the way the user interface gets out of the way and it just kind of works the way you'd expect it to do uh, for the kinds of things that normal people want to do I, I it feels really good to me see i have a theory around this you guys and, and you have a guest there too i love that we're just talking um but i think it's because they're going to come out with the next version i mean they knew that they didn't give us everything we wanted right, right? well they have to have something to upgrade too right uh, I love how everyone's like, oh, we want the camera, we want this. You're like, okay, well, we're going to have to pay for it probably for Christmas, for the Christmas presents so maybe. Like release a new one. Maybe, or next year. I, you know, I think that Apple was smart to keep it simple. Um, it, 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 to me... You, 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 this has happened a lot in the computer industry. You make this grid of check marks of all the features, and, and the computer companies try to check all these boxes. And what you get is a very complex device with a lot of features people never use. Uh, Microsoft Word is a good example. Um, you know, uh, any antivirus is a great example. Most PCs are a good example. They're, they're too complex for most people. So in a way, I think erasing some of those check marks and saying we're going to make a simple, easy-to-use device that's intuitive, that makes sense, that you already know how to use. Um, I think there's something to be said for that. I was also disappointed about AT&T. They're still in a relationship. I, I'm on Verizon. I do have an AT&T phone, but it's like open it up. I'm waiting for it to, them to, uh, you know, open it up to other carriers. I think a lot of people thought Verizon was. This is again another example of. But 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 we with the rumor said Verizon. There, there's never been any evidence that Verizon was going to get this device. The device does have 3G. It actually uh, it's is Apple's using some of its clout with AT and T to get them to back down a little. There's no contract if you decide to buy the 3G. They're offering 250 megabytes, which isn't a lot, but it's enough for some people for fifteen dollars a month. For thirty dollars a month, you get the full unlimited plan, which normally costs sixty dollars. So, it you know it's well priced. I may not even buy the 3G model. I might just get the one. All of them have Wi-Fi uh, built in, and almost everybody has access to wireless networking these days. Yeah, it's funny. I was at the Grove, which was you know an open-air mall here in L.A., asking people about the iPad today. One out of five people knew what it was. That shows how niche right now. It, it, do you feel like this whole thing is a, a niche buzz? I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, it was just, it's well, interesting. Yeah, we geeks are obsessive about this stuff. Of I mean, course. I've been we started talking about this 10 hours ago and I haven't gone off the air since. I mean, this is of course we talk we care way too much, much more than the average person. That's what we do. We're geeks, we're enthusiasts. Um, but I think a lot of geeks are disappointed. The true geeks, the, the true tech enthusiasts wanted more from this thing and I don't think it's aimed at the true tech enthusiast. I think it's aimed at the iPod users, somebody who wants something that's just simple, that's going to have their pictures on it, their music, their their videos, their TV shows on it. Uh, I was a little disappointed. I, I did hope that Apple would have a subscription TV service on it. I think that would be a very mm -hmm. compelling product on there. It's a really uh, capable book reader. I think if I were the New York Times, I'd be really excited about it. I mean, uh, the Kindle's a bad experience for the New York Times because the New York Times, you want to jump around any newspaper or magazine. You want to jump around. You don't want to read yeah. linearly. The, the Kindle's really good if you just go page, page, page. Um, this is a device that's designed, I mean, the New York Times looks gorgeous on this. You can move around in it very easily. You tap something and it'll open up. Uh, you can even embed video into the newspaper. I think this may be, if nothing else, it may be the revival of the newspaper industry. I'm sure they feel that way. Yeah, for media, it'll help us all out a lot. Yeah. So people, in the next 90 days, it's going to be available? 60 days if you're willing to settle days. for the Wi-Fi only version. That's the version that's $499 for 16 gigabytes, okay. $599 for 32, and $699 for 64. Then a month later, they're going to offer the version that has built-in GPS and uh, 3G, you know, wireless, uh, um, you know, cell phone networking. And that's going to, you're going to add $130 to those base prices for that capability. I'll be honest with you. 
I'm buying it in 60. I'm just going to get the first one that comes out. You got to, because you're a geek. Yeah, I'm a geek, and I want it. And I think it's there beautiful. Go. And I'm going to be, I'm, I, I know exactly I'm going to use this. I'm going to be lying in bed, and I'm going to be reading on it. Maybe I'll watch a TV show. Maybe I'll send a quick email. This is going to be my in-bed breakfast table device. Exactly. I'm pretty sure it's going to be on many people's wish lists, not just the geeks and the technologists out there. Yeah, I could see my mom using this, loving it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Leo, for talking to me. Thank you, Shira. Always great to talk to you. And come up, see us next time you're in town. I'd love know. to see you. Here, let me, um, I just closed that. But thank you. That's <laughs> for my, uh, my fun blog on cbsnews.com.